Welcome to another episode of Kingdom Come. Tell me what happened in Scalots. I have kin there. Okay. It was awful, yeah. Sigismund's army appeared out of nowhere. There were so many of them, not just infantry, but cavalry, too. And those foreign mercenaries with their strange helmets and the, the souls of beasts. Heavens above! They began murdering. They cut down anyone who didn't flee to the castle and destroyed everything in their path. Terrible cries of the wounded and the dying. I'll never forget it. It was only by some miracle I managed to take one of their horses and ride here. How terrible. All the saints in heaven must have been watching over you to keep you alive. But you're safe here now. Yeah. Alright, so as I was saying, welcome to Kingdom Come Deliverance. Okay, we did rest, I think, right? Oh, we have to go and rest. Yeah. You've done well, lad. I'm sorry for your loss. You must be all done in. Why don't you go to the kitchen and have a good meal? Sorrow is easier to bear Please on a full stomach. What happened in Scalis. I have kin there. I heard about your father. You too? He was a swordsmith who moved to the countryside to make horseshoes. Where are you going? Oh, sorry. I, I can't understand why he'd waste his talents, but... He had a fine reputation. Must. It's a great loss. He's. Uh, do I have to eat myself? Savior snaps. I'm gonna eat, where's the food at? Oh, okay. Ah, I'm the lady. You are fortunate our good lady Stephanie of Talmberg has graced us with her presence. My lady, I'm honored. So this is our brave young man. Welcome, lad. Bojena here will take care of you. No doubt you're tired and hungry. <laughs> Indeed. How could he not be, poor soul? After everything he's been through, he must be as hungry as a bear. Aren't you, young master? Here you are, then. Eat your fill. And a little wine to wash it down. Thank you, my lady. <clears throat> when you're done, you can go and rest with the grooms in the outer valley. No, that won't do, Sir Robard. After all he's been through, he deserves a proper bed. Let him sleep in a lodge in the courtyard. Certainly, my lady. Young Henry here is overwhelmed by your generosity. Oh, yes, yes. Thank you, my lady. May God reward you for your kindness. Eat up now. You're in capable hands, so I'll leave you to it. Good night. Good night. Good night, ma'am. Oh my God. This is wonderful. When you've done, you can sleep in the bedchamber of the courtyard lodge. And don't forget to take off those filthy boots before getting into bed. <laughs> I like no one's being rude to me right now. And bro, English is so... Like... I have to eat something. My insides are shriveled up with the hunger. Yeah, that's true. Okay, so... I was saying English is really great. Like English from United Kingdom is amazing. But American English is awful, dude. I know. Okay. Pick up. Pick up. 
I'm not stealing, right? I think I should I should eat like this. Be fine. Where's my hunger? Is like visibility, energy, health, regulatory vitality. I don't see my hunger. I'll take these. Cheese. Please tell me what happened in Scallops. I have kin there. You too? Oh my god. Wait, let me take these foods. You're back? I'm sorry about what happened to you, but it's no excuse for rudeness. Come on, sir. No, I, I, I'm gonna talk. But we did talk before. Are you like bipolar or something? Anyway, let's go sleep. Ooh. Pretty sure. Okay, this is the door. Okay. Uh, I see my tiredness and food. Food is half, so I should eat more. Okay, hunger is gone. I'm really sleepy. Oh, damn, I'm tired. <sighs> <sighs> Sleep time. Okay, so we can choose the arts. I mean, we are really tired, so 12 hours of sleep is great. Hmm. Today the patrols will be doubled. Keep your eyes peeled. If you see anything out of the ordinary, report it immediately. Understood? Yes, yes sir. sir. Yes? It is I, Henry. Forgive the intrusion. I didn't wake you, boy, did I? Uh, my lady... Uh... Um, no, no, not at all. But what brings you here at this hour? I thought you could do with a little wine. It's just what you need to help you sleep. My lady, um, thank you. You really shouldn't. You could have sent a sermon. I was going to. But, to tell you the truth, I couldn't sleep either. I thought of you while saying my prayers. How awful it must have been for you. I came to offer you solace. To let you know you're not alone. Thank you. Thank you kindly. You're welcome. Now, Henry. I know this is all very new and strange for you. But I want you to feel at home here. You're not to worry about anything except getting better. God knows you've been through a terrible ordeal. I know what it is to be left alone in the world. Although your loss is much greater. But with God's help, the pain will ease in time. And it can help to talk about it, if you feel like it. 
Okay. Is she like horny or something? I don't know. <laughs> I don't want to be rude. You might be right, my lady. I'll tell you what happened. It was terrible and unexpected. The day started just like any other. Father sent me into town on some errands. Um, <clears throat> Bianca. I went to the tavern to buy ale for father. I know it's a job for a groom, but I didn't mind, because my girl Bianca worked there. I courted her a while and we agreed to meet in the evening, but our meeting was never to happen. Oh dear boy. When I'd done all the errands, I headed back home. I promised father I'd help him with his work and I was looking forward to it. He was forging a sword for Sir Radzi. I'd been secretly learning sword fighting and hiding it from my parents. So when we assembled the sword, I tried a few moves with it. There's a big difference between a wooden sword and a real one. Maybe if I hadn't taken that sword in my hand, I wouldn't be here today. You're full of surprises. But Sigismund's horde was already on the horizon, ready to attack the town. A horde of soldiers was amassed. Pennants flapped in the wind, the armour glinted in the sunlight and the horses whinnied impatiently. They were waiting for Sigismund to give the command to attack. How awful. And then death descended on Scalitz. I didn't. Father told me to take shelter in the castle while he went to get mother. She was stranded in the town, surrounded by Sigismund butchers. And then I saw him knocking down one human after another. I never saw him fight like that. But then the leader of Sigismund's raiding party, a knight in full armour, saw father and charged at him. He cut down my father without a thought. And then he turned on my mother. And he murdered her in cold blood. You poor boy. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. I ran to the castle like our neighbours to take cover, but I didn't make it. I had to find another way to save myself. The men on the battlements called down to me to flee to Talmberg and warn you. I was lucky I knew a concealed path around the castle. I wasn't safe yet. The Cumans were going from house to house below the castle, looting and then torching them. They encircled the castle, and it was clear they could spot me at any moment. May God punish them. Then I heard a scream. It was Teresa, the mill wench. She'd been caught by a gang of Cuman savages who planned to violate her. I had Sir Radzik's sword, and even though there were several of them and they were better armed, I had to try and save her. I wanted there to be at least one person I'd helped. And I succeeded, even though it almost cost me my life. After that, I stole a horse from them and rode off. Like a valiant knight. I'll never forget the horror. It will haunt me for the rest of my life. Yeah. The mom and died. It's terrible. How could something like that happen? God alone knows why he lets such things happen. Oh, you poor boy. I understand your grief, but God is not to blame for the ills of this world. That is the work of Satan and those who do his bidding. Those who are corrupted by greed, envy, and pride. You must not lose faith, whatever life brings. Fate has not been merciful to me and my husband either. Although in comparison to the horrors you went through. I was young when I married my husband. It was my father's wish. Divish was a lot older than I, but a woman must bear her lot. Shortly after our marriage, before I even got a look at Talmberg, the castle was stormed and my husband was imprisoned. Really? My husband had some quarrel with Sir Havel Medek of Valdek, who decided to resolve it by force. He stormed the castle, burned down the village of Probislavets, and killed many of our men, even the old Chamberlain. 
He imprisoned my husband in the castle and put his own garrison there. That's awful. I was barely 18 years old and all of a sudden I was left alone with Sir Robert. We didn't know what to do. We went to Prague to appeal to the king and sought help from Divish's friends, but all to no avail. We tried for years, but it seemed I was destined to be left alone and my husband to rot in jail in his own castle. Years, you say? Seven years. That's how long it took before Havel was condemned as an enemy of the crown. And even then, he refused to surrender the castle and release my husband. In the end, I raised the money to pay a ransom, and only then, by the grace of Lord Jesus, did I finally lay eyes on my husband once more. Seven years. And was Harville punished for it? Never. And after seven years, my husband returned to me an infirm old man. Sir Divish seems like a good, strong man. Well, certainly, only he has many concerns. He had to rebuild Talmberg. After he was released, the king appointed him Burgrave of Prague Castle, and he was very busy. He had no time for me at all. But at least we were in the city, and there was something going on. And now, we're here. My lady, you're still young and... Beautiful. Your best years are still ahead of you. Would that that were true, lad. Would it were true. But what am I doing bothering you with this? You have troubles enough of your own. I'll go and let you sleep. I enjoyed our little talk, Henry. Good night and God bless. Good night, my lady. I might be wrong. She might be just coming to help me, I don't know. But Loki, I think she's liking me. I don't know, I don't know. <sighs> I shouldn't change clothes, by the way. <laughs> I forgot that. Anyway, it's fine. Wake up. You don't want to miss this. What is it? What's happening? Come to the battlements. One of our patrols reported a company heading here from Skelets. Okay. I don't know this country like we do. We could hide out somewhere until it blows over. Maybe. Only all they have to do is... No fool. You're right there. Listen up! If it's Sigurd's men and his army, prepare for the worst. But don't be daunted by their numbers. Heed my commands, and all will end well. Hey, you men down there, 
Tell the people outside the walls to prepare for attack. Quickly, do you understand? What's going on? I don't know. It doesn't make sense. Why would Sigismund advance on Talmurg in the night? Especially since he's lost the element of surprise after the raid on Skalitz. Maybe it's not him. Then who is it? The scouts Jivis sent to Skalitz to spy on Sigismund said he'd set up camp and was getting ready to storm the castle. And Sir Radzig is an experienced soldier. He'd surely hold the castle for quite some time. It doesn't make sense. What else did the spies see? Not much of anything. Before they could get close enough, this huge storm started. And you were right. Sigismund has a hell of a lot of soldiers, including all manner of mercenaries. An army like that costs a fortune. Well, anyway, we'll find out when they get here, won't we? Aye, we will. Take care. and all his minions. Who else, Robert? Sir Antic. What a relief. Is his lordship there with you? Yes, sir. He is right here. What are you doing up so late, Divish? At your age, you need a good night's sleep. <laughs> well, Rantic, you didn't exactly pick the best time for an outing either. In a big hurry? It was a bit of a scramble, all right. Believe it or not, this Tempest is a godsend for me and my men. As my old granddad used to say, better a sore throat than a slit throat. I'd say your grandfather was a wise man. Your messenger told us what happened. Messenger? The lad you sent to warn us. He's alive? He made it to you? He's here with me. He only got away by the skin of his teeth, though. Thank God. A brave young man. But tell me, friend, how on earth did you manage to get away? Thank God for this tempest. When it began, Sigismund's Tatars crawled into their holes and left a storm in the castle for more clement weather. We were able to sneak out right under their noses. The Lord be praised. We wouldn't have stood a chance against them. Would you like to spend the night in Tumber? No, no. When Sigismund finds the castle empty tomorrow, he might come looking for us. We'd only be exposing you to danger. Without me and my men, he has no call to attack you. Well, what will you do then? We'll march to Ratai. It's only a short way, and there we'll have a better chance of defense and enough room for all of these people. If Sigismund should come, better bend your knee, Divish. There's no point dying in a battle that's futile. You're right there. Is that boy still with you? I'm here, sir. You have courage, lad. That I can't deny. I am sorry about what happened. Would you care to join us? I'd like to, sir, but first I have to return to Skalitz. Are you mad? What do you want there? I can't leave my mother and father. I won't leave their corpses rotting in the street. I'll join you once I've taken care of them. Don't even think of going back there, you donkey. Are you tired of living? But sir! Quiet! I'm sorry about your father, but getting killed as well won't help him. Divish? Make sure that lad doesn't budge from Talmberg until things quieten down. Not to worry, friend. Anyway, he's injured and needs to recover. I'll lock him up here as if he were Havel of Baldic. <laughs> I see you've grown a thick skin since your tribulation, sir. But thank you. We'll meet again when circumstances are more favorable. Farewell. Farewell, friend, and good fortune. Give my regards to Sir Hanish. I will. And good luck to you and your people too. It's a dark times. Move out! Anywhere, people! Move out! I like this guy, but I sense some dark energy. Like, he looked like an evil person, right? I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. But it's, it's really fun to watch the cinematics, man. It's so entertaining. <laughs> Well made. Men, tonight we'll have triple patrols. Sort out the watches between you as always. And if I catch anyone boozing, playing dice or slacking off, I'll personally break every bone in his body. I want you to keep a close eye on everything nearby. Sigismund will surely have sent spies, 
and likely men as well, to follow the Scalitz people now he knows they've fled. Keep your eyes peeled and report everything to me at once. Understood? I'll talk to you. What is it you need? I could use an extra pair of eyes, and yours are keen. Will you keep watch on the battlements with my men? Is that a request or an order? I'd rather it was a request you answered yes to. Of course I'll help. I have to pay you back somehow after all you've done for me. Splendid! And don't worry, I'll tell the men to relieve you later. Farewell. Okay. I barely see shit though. I think I'm just gonna stay here, right? The atmosphere is really great, bro. Not all of the games has this quality. Wandering around like a stray sheep. Must be your first watch, eh? I don't think anything much will be happening today. You can just lean against the wall and wait till morning. I'll show you what's going on. I will. Thank you. I didn't know I was just looking around, etc. <laughs> it was right, I don't know. Are you supposed to watch a tower, bro? Hey. Good day to you. What do you think about the Scalitz folk managing to slip away like that? I can't imagine how they did it. The more I think about it, they was either blessed, or Sigismund's mercenary army ain't up to much. When you're on campaign, you keep watch no matter how much it's pissing down. If any of us make such a cock-up, Sir Robard will flay his skin off our backs. You only say that because you never saw them attack. Aye. Well, it's a shame your folks couldn't be saved. Is Sir Robard really that tough? Tough? Aye. But he's fair. He's a veteran of many a campaign, so he knows Warcraft. I believe it. May the Lord watch over you. I don't see shit. Oh my God! And then you just stay like this. And watch the weather. Well? Can I just sleep now? Oh, the background noise still out in the back. They did not cut it. Great. So Razzy Cobalt Sword. I was I was going to think like he's gonna ask a sword, you know? But he didn't. Are you hungry? Oh we're not. We're Gucci.
Wait a minute. Uh, quest log. Wait until morning. I close your eye then. Oh, map Thunberg. Uh, whoa, okay. This is, the, this is the this is my seal, right? Yeah, this is my city. This is how I came back. And I run the horse like this. And I hit the Rona. I pass the Rona, they slaughter Rona too, I think. And I pass like this. And I'm a tall bird. Damn, the map is kind of big. That's a map. Uh, how I sleep? Skip time. It's gonna be day in like a couple hours. Yes. What's happening, man? happening holy shit again Indeed, Robard. Sigismund of Luxembourg has a rare talent for winning people over to his cause. You may be in for a surprise. I don't think he will set his heathen dogs on us today. Greetings, Lord of Tomberg. <laughs> That's the bastard who let the attack of Scullis and killed my parents. An idiot! Do you want to end up like them? I am Sir Mark Vart von Aulitz. I come in the name of Sigismund of Luxembourg, King of Hungary and Croatia, who has resolved to strike against those who disrupt Concord in the land and to restore order in the name of his brother, King Wenceslaus IV. Restore order by burning and pillaging the king's estates. Greetings, Sir Markvart. The efforts of the king's brother to bring order to this chaotic land are undoubtedly noble. It seems to me, though, that he and his army have somewhat strayed. As Burgrave of Prague Castle, I am entirely beholden to the king. And here in Taunberg, divine peace reigned until 
your arrival. To what then do we owe the honor of your visit? Yesterday, His Majesty took action against the enemy of the kingdom, the Ratzik Kobila, who has been using the silver from the Skalitz mine to fund insurrection against the crown. Unfortunately, the insurgent escaped. Would you happen to know, noble sir, where he might be at this time? As far as I know, the Sir Radzik of which you speak is the king's hetman at Skalitz. I find it hard to imagine that he would rebel against our king. Nevertheless, I can assure you that Sir Radzik is not at Talmerg. He would be a fool indeed to flee from one castle where he has little chance of defense to another where he has even less. Or do you take the view that my humble manner is any obstacle to your army? Am I to inform the king then that Zeratsi Kobila is not a Tamburg and that he has your loyalty? Sir Radzig Kobila is not here, and I have no intention of getting embroiled in affairs from which I have nothing to gain. Very well, sir. As you wish. I will relay your words to the king in the hope he will be as well disposed as you seem to be. Those who have clean consciences and good will may find themselves well disposed even at moments like this when there is little cause for joy. Farewell, sir. Auf Wiedersehen. Hey, it's not German. I feel like they're gonna attack. Is that the Lord? Okay, nice! Woo! Let's get it! My lord, you have my utmost admiration. Get on with you, Robard. I look like a Robin Hood, bro. Who is that Lord, though? Like, so, or, or Sir, in a, where is it? In a. Scarlet's, I forget his name, was doing some illegal shit. That's why they punished us, as far as I could understand. So, yeah. I don't know the real reason, though. Like, they could just take that guy and not kill everyone, you know? I wonder if Bianca's alive. I I'm pretty sure I'm gonna go back there, if it allows me to. Get a horse. Sigismund and his heathen cutthroats will come out of the woods any time now and slaughter us all. They won't come back. Why would they? We'll stay here overnight to be on the safe side and go back to the feast tomorrow. Do I have to talk with this guy? Good day to you. Why did Sigismund burn down Scalets and then come here too? That's war for you, lad. Certain lords have resolved to take things into their own hands and eliminate anyone who doesn't share their view. Unfortunately, Sir Radzig is one of those. And what's more, he was sitting on a pile of silver that could help King Wenceslas's allies. Oh, okay. He's just replying the same shit. What happened in Gutenberg? Gutenberg? Well, I'm just a simple soldier, but the good lord gave me ears, and I've heard some things from Sir Divish and from those who fled from Sigismund's pillaging. Were there many? Indeed. 
but it was the Kutenberg mercenaries who came to see me, because I knew them from before. I see. Listen, lad. These are all games of the high aristocracy. In Prague, a cabal of nobles rebelled against King Wenceslas, wealthy aristocrats who took against our king for reasons of their own. There's no doubt Sigismund had his fingers in the whole affair. Him and Wenceslas's cousin, Jobst. And that cabal helped him abduct the king. So then why did Sigismund attack Kuttenberg? Why do you think? <clears throat> I don't know, to be honest. I feared his tropes. Because it's a fertile place with full granaries that could feed Sigismund's troops? <laughs> That's not it. King Charles, may God grant him eternal glory, built Prague into a proper royal city, while King Wenceslas took a liking to Kutenberg. After Prague, it's the most important city in Bohemia, in the entire Holy Roman Empire. He who commands the Kutenberg silver is king. So Kutenberg sided with Wenceslas because he favoured it? Now you're starting to understand. When Sigismund imprisoned Wenceslas and took control of Prague, the people of Kutenberg began to raise an army against him. So with the attack on Kutenberg, Sigismund killed two birds with one stone. He defeated Wenceslas' most powerful allies before they could stand against him and also gained immense wealth. Okay. Where did these humans come from anyway? I don't know much about them, only what the Chamberlain said. That they came to Hungary from the east and settled there. They're godless barbarians and merciless fighters. The nobles used to say the Hungarian king shouldn't enlist them, because they dishonor our rules of warfare. But when there's power and money to be had, it seems that honor isn't worth my spit. And believe me, it's always about power and money. Okay, yes. Alright, I have to go. So, Robard, I need to get to Scalitz. What would you do there, lad? Sigismund might have left, but the place will be swamped with robber barons, brigands, deserters, and other vermin. And anyway, your lord commanded you to stay here. I have to bury my parents, man. So, Robard, my parents died there. I can't leave them to be eaten by dogs. What would you do in my place? Sorry, lad, but I won't take orders. You'll have to wait until everything settles down and maybe your lord will change his mind. Shit. I learned Kuttenberg, did I? Oh, I didn't. Said yourself you don't believe a word. Stop working yourself. It's fine, and that's how it'll stay. Fine, but no buts. Everything will be all right. Everything will be all right. Alrighty. I will end up so you guys. Thanks for watching. I've been enjoying this series a lot. So yeah, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Take care and peace out.